Welcome everybody to uh, our August 18th sale here. We've got on showpig.com. Hey, we're bringing you a great set of, of June babies here. We've got a pair of Elite Dew Rocks, three fabulous Hampshire females, three of the better crossbred females with a little surprise in there. Full sit to the board we put in the stud called Digger. We got three powerhouse uh, Tamworth females and we're letting go three really good Hereford females. And also for you bear enthusiasts, we have three powerful Hereford bears. Guys, we want to invite you to come and look at them. Please call us uh, with any questions. Thank you very much. We are now checking out a pair of, or a trio of Hampshire gilts that we're starting off the sale with. Yep, lot one is on the stick right now. This is Hampshire gilt 84-11. She is a world class prime time. I think pedigree wise, this is what we are attempting to make. This is a gilt that has the extinction and attractiveness and reads futuristic. She's going to be a powerhouse female. I mean, you got to talk about we're in the middle of August. Imagine what this girl's going to look like at the turn of the year when she just masses and tanks up and gets that bold center rib that we know world class and prime time both lay into them. She has that tall shoulder that extra rib length. This is one that you can kind of take home, put on the feed, and just let her be a true Hampshire female. If you want to take her back and be a foundation female, you can see for her underline and vulva set, she's just truly maternal in her type. And Lindsay, she's got a big root. What's that mean? Oh yeah, that big tail. Big tail. She's going to be stout. Going to be stout. Let's switch to the primetime uh, world class gilt. So flip that pedigree compared to uh, the one before. This is lot two, 85-4 primetime world class. Uh, so same genetics, just lined up a little bit different. I think and compared to the Hampshire gilts that we have in here, uh, she's maybe one of the greener uh, bodied ones. But I say that in relation to what a top. What a hip, what a skull width that she has into her. She too has extra extension and length through her body. Remember these Hampshire females, we need them to be green uh, as they're little like this so we keep those feet and legs inside their body wall. And as they mature, specifically this line of pedigree, they just start to open up and take out. And that's where dad's talking about again, that wider skull, that wider ear set, and that wider tail uh, root there. Lindsay, and I'll tell you something here. Uh, just her added extension and elevation that this girl has got allowed her to turn into a big root now. Absolutely. Now let's hit the, uh, don't mind the Chester boar uh, barking at us, but let's hit that dark colored gilt. This is lot three, 101-7. This is Explorer back on prime time. This would be one of our first Explorer litters that we had here. If you remember, Explorer is a boar that we raised here at Gold Rush. Uh, first of all, awesome that she's dark colored uh, heading in here to the fall and winter months. Not going to have to worry too much about skin and hair on that one. But let's just talk about true functionality in the way that she just is soft and bold through that center rib and how she's just so pliable and uh, correct in her foundation. She right now is just one of those complete low maintenance easy feeding type of a female that I think you'll take home and that extra extension her head's tied at the top of her shoulder blade and then from there back she drops into a deep really bold rib. Lindsay, I'll tell you, that was me. What a great underlying, deep body, loose hip type of a female. I'm going to tell you, that one there in 60 days will be one beautiful group out. Hey everyone, we're now in the Dew Rock pen checking out a pair of Littermate Dew Rock Gilts. Hey, the one that is right here on the end of uh, the broom, this is Lot 5. This is 37-7. These are a pair of Littermate gilts. They are family tradition back on upper class. That upper class mommy is the same mommy as our boring stud that we have called Frontline. 
And as you can see, these ladies do not lack for any amount of bone. Uh, this dash seven right there here with dad's uh, broom on top of her, that is a square big back, square upper hip gill that's opened up in our lower skeleton, just massive wide skulls all the way through. Her litter mate sister here would be lot four. This is 37-6 same pedigree. She is way cocky and cool front uh, fronted. She's really chiseled and neat necked, really clean through that head and neck, very attractive from the side. I think she might just be a little greener compared to her sister, uh, but in terms of fundamental hind leg and build, I think this one puts a lot of pieces together. We know that pedigree, specifically with that mommy on the backside, that mass, that power, that center volume and rib, it'll certainly be there. So these again are lot five or lot four and lot five. It's Hereford time. Now we're checking out a trio of Hereford gilts. Okay, I want to talk about this gilt right here. This is lot six. 40-9. I want to just start with her pedigree first uh, because she is a trucking on back on war cry and uh, the mother of this gilt is 18-9 who is also the mother of trucking on. So we lined him up or lined her up on both sides of the pedigree there uh, just because she's been a proven female for us raising champions at the Kentucky State Fair, uh, the West Virginia State Fair, uh, multiple county state shows uh, in Tennessee, jackpot shows all around, uh, pretty much every litter that she has hits. So we wanted to stack that sow up 18-9 on both sides of the pedigree. Now let's just look at this gilt. When you talk about fundamental basics of a female, what they need to look like when they're young and little. They need to be flexible, they need to be attractive, they need to have that good combination of brood style look and femininity. And I think you can read all of that just through that front end of her. She's not only wide through her skull, but she's clean through that jaw. She's still skinny at, at this stage where she needs to be green. She's just gonna grow and mass up and stouten up, but yet she's super square at the ground and square down her top side. I see a lot of potential for this one. And those of you that are really wanting to elevate uh, your Hereford herd, I feel this is a great place to start. And not only that, she is impeccably colored. We have two litter mate sisters right here. Uh, let's start with, uh, we'll go with the bigger of the two. I believe that is 41-3. These gilts are War Cry back on Taco Truck. And uh, I think you can see that taco truck really coming through. These guys are super, 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 super stout. Uh, this gill, I think, is the boldest rib, most pliable center yet, but she's square at the ground, square from hop to hop. She's wide and stout through that front end. I think this will be a female that is going to be easy feeding, low maintenance, and certainly going to make you some stout, uh, impressive show pigs. You know, Lindsay, on this gilt here, I want to say also, uh, remember Taco Truck dominated uh, oh. 2019 and 2018, mm -hmm. and uh, they're not making any more of those. This yeah. is a great opportunity to pull that genetic line in. Sister. And you have, yeah, you have two options here. You got the younger, greener sister here, and this one will be lot eight. This is 41 4. I think this girl uh, is unique. Is she the same powerhouse as her sister is today? Probably not, but is she a little more feminine through that front end? A little, uh, just maybe prancier here we have her. She's kind of hot to trot here today. I think this is one that you take home. She will mature. She will progress. You will not have to worry about getting enough power, enough flesh on these females. I think that's an awfully futuristic guilt that you, honestly, when we see her at the end of the day, you're probably not going to recognize her. Uh, I'm going to ask you a question, Lindsay. Have mm -hmm. you ever seen a taco truck that didn't blow? up into a big massive one no would you say not. this one's hip and high legs sets down just about as good as you could get one well i think that's where she has that advantage i mean let's be real honest that's where a lot of the hereford breed struggles uh is when they get that upper hip Looking mass right there. yeah they're having a hard time keeping those hind legs inside their body wall and we know that that upper hip will come genetically and uh, quite frankly they these are our summer pigs they're not fed and fit on this is natural you take them home that's just going to bulk 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 just practicality, good, good livestock. Hey everyone, we're now checking out a uh, 
trio of litter mate Tamworth guilt. So it's Tam time. All right, this entire litter is Zoolander, back on record breaker, born the 1st of June. The one we're looking at right here is lot 11. This is 36 dash seven. I would say the trio of guilt, this is the guilt that kind of meets in the middle. She's the one that has a big engine in the middle of her, got a big square top, a super stout hip, plenty of chest floor, plenty of width when you get behind her, but yet still has some extension and femininity and attractiveness to her. You can see her there from behind. She, I think, sets that uh, hind leg down wide and square and genuine. Uh, I think this is one you take home. You won't ever have to worry about feeding muscle into that one. Similar, this is dash five, lot 10, 36, dash five. Holy smokers. If you have been struggling getting muscle power mass into your Tamworth females and you're wanting to kind of rejuvenate your herd with some oomph and power, right here she is. This is a wide chested, huge back, stout hips gilt that's just wide in her lower skeleton, bold in her rib. She's stout in her skull. This is a gilt that I think you maybe need to take her home, slow her up just a little bit, uh, but that's a power, power female. <laughs> No, lot 9, 36-4. Again, these are Zoolander record breakers. Probably the most immature guilt uh, of the trio that we have here, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I think she's kind of that little and cute stage right now, and I think she's cocky-headed that I, I believe will stay with her the entire time. She squared that chest floor. She's really level, and I, I think from that shoulder blade down to her tail head, uh, great in terms of her design, but obviously doesn't sacrifice muscle shape uh, and power through her hip. If we didn't see her other sisters, we would talk about how much back shape and hip shape she has. And I don't even want to uh, skip over the fact just the amount of bone for the breed uh, that these girls are standing on. So really neat set, uh, three litter mates, lots 9, 10, and 11. We are now checking out a trio of crossbred gilts. Okay, we'll just start in order there with the blue gilt. This is lot 12, 90-12. This is exchange rate electrified. I want to be real clear. Anytime you see exchange rate in a pedigree, you need to be taking a second look. You want to study this gilt and just look at her femininity through that front end and the way she's angled in her shoulder and her hock. But yet, when you get on top of her and you see just how square and genuine is she is in that muscle shape and pattern, uh, this is an incredible guilt that we are very, very excited, very high on. She's one that if we can you know, get that side shot of her, she has that true, genuine show ring look. We'll go to the black guilt here. This is lot 13. Uh, her ear notch is 104-6. She is an Electrify on Party Up North. A uh, little younger of a guilt, maybe just a little skinnier here today. But again, when we talk about just genuine femininity, that truly extended front end, at this stage, we want that head and neck to be clean and chiseled and neat because as they grow, she's going to mass up. But yet, that head and neck's going to stay feminine. But from her blade back, she's a rib longer. She's deep and full in that lower portion of her body. She's square down her top line, square and stout through her hip. That's an incredible guilt that I think is still green enough in her pattern to run the distance, uh, depending how far you want to run into the winter uh, with that one. That one's an awfully, awfully neat guilt. like her a lot. Lindsay, I'm going to add in on that guilt there. She didn't show the best. That is one big time female. It's got a lot of future in front of her. Yeah, I think you could run that one at early jackpots or at her finish out standpoint. We can switch over here to, uh, this is 106-9. This is lot 14. She's a matchmaker Horton. And so this 106 litter would be full sibs to digger that we have here on stud at uh, Schaefer's Gold Rush. And hoo -hoo -hoo -hoo. I, I mean, this whole pen is incredible females, but study that hind leg structure for a second. 
how great she is in that set to her hawk and the flexibility, just uh, the angle to her shoulder and all of that great build down low reads to just that attractiveness and good design up high. I think this, these are three females that you could break apart and tear apart. Don't ask us which one we like better because I guarantee we'll all give you three different answers. But this orange gill is one that will certainly stand out in the showroom. Lindsay, I'm just going to add, and I don't do a lot of that when we do round days, but if you like them, tall shoulder, big legged, and then study the picture of Digger, a January boar that has like November, December type bone on it, and this little girl right here is going to have it. Herford Barrow time. Yep, let's talk about, this will be lot 15 and 16 brothers. If you didn't go back and look at the Herford Gilt lineup, they have a sister to go look at. We talked about uh, this pedigree there. These are trucking ones uh, back on rapid fire. Uh, the mother of these is also the mother of trucking on. We lined that up, hoping to hit one out of the ballpark uh, again. And I certainly think we did. Hoo, hoo, hoo. That's a good looking bear. I mean, he you see just that back shape and the density of his top line, but yet he pulls together and has that genuine show look. He's square at his hawk, he sits it down right. I think that's an awfully neat barrel. Again, uh, that one was, which one were you pulling uh, on, that, that was, that was uh, the two barrel. Okay, 40-2, he was lot 16. Here's his brother right here is 40-1. This is lot 15. Again, same pedigree. This guy is just so fresh. He's really expressive in that back shape and so much definition there through his hip and lower stifle, but yet stout in that skull and opened up in his chest floor. I think this is one that you don't even have to worry about, Paley. He's just going to go and have the natural goods uh, from front to back. No question. That is the raw muscle, mm -hmm. real genuine barrel. So let's switch over. This is lot 17, 41-2. Uh, War Cry Taco Truck. Go back and look at two of his sisters uh, that will be higher up in the sale today. But I just want to talk about practical, good livestock. When we just see this guy get out and go, he's opened up and soggy in that center rib, but yet he's tall and long through that cannon bone. And why I say that is there's future, there's growth in this one. He's not going to put out and end on you early. He's got enough length and extension and see that hawk set right there. He's square and genuine from that hawk all the way up. And in this Herford Greed, that's going to be a major advantage uh, as you move forward. And the pace width in that one is just, is just amazing. Mm -hmm. Excellent set of Hereford Barrows. I think these are ones that you can go and play with no matter where you want to go, uh, what your end goal is. But very, very, very excited. Right there is the look of that bear. Just he's put together so well. Lot, lot again, Lindsay. 17. 17. Thank you. Thank you for watching all online sales.